All right, I promise you fireworks, dude. It's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes with Tony and Newt. Talking about tapes. Hello, Newt. Oh, hi, Tony. Happy 4th of July week. Yeah, this comes out the beginning of the month. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. And of course, 4th of July, very, very important day to me. It's, uh, it's where I celebrate something that I love, that I cherish dearly. That is the United States of America. It's also me and my girlfriend's anniversary. But that's okay, like, yeah. That's no, like it's not as big. On yeah. the list of things that 4th of July is known for. Exactly. For I don't want to, you know, like, let's focus on what's important. Yeah. That's America. Mm -hmm. uh, love Fourth of July. I love Independence Day, as it's called. Yes, I, ID4. Yeah, that was, you know, it worked. Yeah. It worked. No, it did. That, it worked. Yeah. Uh, we are recording on our new audio recorder. Yeah. that Because that one mysteriously died. I don't know what happened. And as of this recording, we still haven't figured out the whole voicemail thing. <laughs> I know like a cheap way to do it, but I want it to sound nice. That's mm -hmm. the thing. That's the thing. Anyway. Let's... Because you care as much about our fans as you do America. I do. I Well, I can never care that much about my fans. I care a lot about America. Uh... <laughs> You're going to give them the red, white, and blues. <laughs> <laughs> So let's talk about Independence Day, Roland Emmerich's Independence Day, Roland Emmerich of Stargate fame. Yeah. Roland. And look, Newt, you might think I'm biased because I have a shrine to his Godzilla movie here, but I swear that's out of irony. Uh, I don't hate the guy. Uh, I'm starting not to realize, you know. Uh. <laughs> what are your fond memories of Roland Emmerich's Independence Day? This movie was a massive hit. Oh, yeah. A massive hit. You couldn't turn around that summer and not I... see... I got horrified watching. I thought you were just going to say I got hard while watching this and I would have been like. Well, I mean, <laughs> that would have been impressive for a six year old. I don't know how well. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I must have a problem then. <laughs> I, I was saying them yesterday. I was like, they use my blood to make horse Viagra. So. <laughs> so I remember seeing the trailer. Yeah. With like the big fireball and mm -hmm. being like, holy shit, that is the scariest thing I've ever seen. There was like a big theater display. Yeah, yeah. Of the UFO. And I don't know if this is a false memory, but I remember little cardboard people running away from the explosion. I don't remember that. I found, yeah, okay. I found a picture of the theater display with the UFO, but for some reason I remember people running away. But I remember seeing the UFO over the city and I'm like, oh my God, this is, this, what? Is this real? What's going on here? Because I was a kid. I was mm -hmm. stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Huge movie when it came out. Mm -hmm. And uh, <sighs> loved it. Mm -hmm. Loved it. Every minute of it. It was awesome. I liked it when I saw it because I was a kid. I liked Mars Attacks better. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, uh, nah, Kid Tony loved this way more. Really? He loved Mars Attacks. I mean, it's two different loves. That was a good I was in. I was in middle school, so my taste was a bit more refined. Oh, yes. You know? Yes, yes. <laughs> we talk about refined taste. It's what do you prefer more? <laughs> Mars Attacks? Independent. Which, which 96 alien attack mm -hmm. movie do you prefer more? It's, it's like red or white wine. It's <laughs> exactly. one of those selections you have to make, you know? Um, yeah, this was a huge hit. It was uh, Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin. They would go on to do, obviously... Godzilla. Oh, yeah. uh, before this, uh, I saw... They make several threats in this movie that they're going to do. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh, they um, uh, Making Contact, Joey, was the first movie of theirs okay. that I had ever seen. I've never... I've seen parts of that. Does a little alien fart in that no. part of Smoke Cloud? No. No, you're thinking of the Turkish E.T. I'm thinking of Turkish Which e. is <laughs> way <laughs> before that. E. Uh, I can't remember what the Turkish name for that is. But, um, yeah, no, Making Contact was uh, basically... E.T., Poltergeist, mm. The Indian in the Cupboard, and oh, yeah. Goosebumps all mixed together in one. It was like a little kid's grandfather dies and like... Darth Vader in that? Darth Vader's in that movie, yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. that's the one I was And it's got like a creepy ventriloquist dummy yeah. and he talks to his grandfather over the the like kid toy phone and stuff like that. Right. So I remember seeing that when I was a little kid and then I'm like, oh yeah, those guys, because I used to read Starlog magazine. And I was Captain like, oh, yeah, Starlog. yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this. Remember in the, uh, remember in the X-Files movie, he's peeing on an Independence Day poster? Yeah, I have, <laughs> I have a note about that later on. Uh, <laughs> but now and this was after uh, Men in Black, so this was uh, 
Was it after Men in Black? I think so. That was 95. This was the no, next no, summer. No, no, Men in Black was 97, wasn't it? Was it? So this came before Men in Black? I'm pretty sure this came before Men in Black. You know why we don't remember? We got neuralized. We did get, <laughs> we did get neuralized a lot in that episode. So yeah, this was like Will Smith. He was, uh, you know, becoming the big... This is probably the thing that the made him. Hero. Yeah. yeah, because like I said, he doesn't show up till 21 minutes into the movie. And I was like, oh, wow, you know? Yeah, there's a lot of things when you watch... Well, I... I watched uh, the Five Star Collection DVD, which comes with the extended version of the movie, so it actually takes him even longer to show up. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, nine minutes of restored footage. That's that's so much more Independence Day, Newt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'll be going through like some yeah. changes they made. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, Will Smith, he takes a while to show up, and that's one of the things, like, wh whenever I rewatch this, I'm like, where's Will Smith? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, also when I rewatch it, and I have a note at the end, it's just like, I remember, for some reason, I have so many memories of him and Jeff Goldblum being together longer. They're, no. They barely show yeah, exactly. up screen time yeah. together. Which sucks, because they have good chemistry. No, they have good chemistry. Jeff Goldblum is the best character in the movie. Like, the best part of the movie. Him and his dad He's pretty are good. the best part of the movie. Yeah. And I always forget, because his dad pops up, he and his dad pop up again in part two. Yeah. Which was an unmitigated disaster. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But his dad was on that '80s show, Dear John. Remember the show, Dear John? No. You ever saw that? No. I know he was in Taxi. Well, he was on Taxi as well. Yeah. But he used to be on a show called Dear John in like the mid '80s that I remember watching and had no idea what it was about. It was about like some people in a group because they got Dear John letters. I remember Channing Tatum's Dear John. No. And I still and I'm there's something wrong with me because I can still remember the theme song went Dear John. By the time you read this line. I'll be gone. And that's how the theme song goes. And he, yeah. <laughs> you remember a lot of songs. Yeah. There's something wrong with my brain. <laughs> yeah. Like the Rain Man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, remember Wild Wild West? And you just go with the whole thing. Mm -hmm. like, oh, remember Men in Black? You're like, yeah, let me remember. The Ninja Turtles one. And yeah. Mike was sitting next to me like, I'm very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so this, uh, what is it called? The advertising campaign cost $24 million. Yeah. Talk about too fucking big to fail. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and the script took four weeks to write. Yeah. $1.3 million alone for the Super Bowl ad that year. Yeah, that's pretty standard. Though. And that was at what? That was 1996? Mm. 1996, who won the Super Bowl? Uh, the San Francisco 49ers won the Super Bowl that year. I'm going to take your word for with it. With Steve Young as the quarterback. That was a great football fact, Newt. That was a great football fact. Uh, <laughs> the U.S. military had agreed to support the film by allowing their crew to film at military bases. However, once they learned that Area 51 was yeah. in the script, they were like, nope. Yeah, they're probably like, oh, not this shit again. Yeah, that uh, whole fucking thing. Fucking, um, there's a point later in this movie where someone's like, there is no Area 51. I'm like... No, I don't think anyone's denying it. Like, it exists. Yeah. It definitely exists. But it's <laughs> like, okay, maybe there's not aliens yeah. there. But, but the no. fact that people are like, there's no such thing as Area 51. I'm like, yeah, it is on the map. You yeah. can find it. <laughs> there's a fucking gate that says, if you go past this, we can shoot you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, actor uh, Rance Howard and voice uh, actor Frank Welker both appear in this and in Mars Attack. That's true. Yeah. They made it into mm -hmm. both. They made it into both. Because when I forgot that Ron Howard's dad was even in this movie, when they get to that part, I was like, oh shit, it's Ron <laughs> Howard's dad. Newt, what did the people of Lebanon, the Lebanese, the home of Mia Khalifa, what did they think of this movie? Uh, they didn't like it very much. Oh, I wonder why. Because well, uh, there's a scene where it's like, we're going to team up with uh, people that we hate. The Israeli and the Iraqi soldiers. The Israeli and Iraqi soldiers, soldiers yeah. So it was uh, banned in Lebanon for mm -hmm. that? Yeah, had because even in that there's an alien invasion, racism and hatred over religion still has to exist. More countries need to watch, well, one, watch Independence. Of course, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> but if they hate America, you know, they're, they're going to go in with bias. More countries need to watch Enemy Mine. Yes. That's a great movie. Or if you hate America and you get to see all the American things blowing up, <laughs> you just keep rewinding it and it looks like the part of Kate Winslet naked in Titanic, <laughs> the tape skips. I still like... haven't done my test where I go through each Titanic tape to see if it's discolored. Yeah, when you guys were talking about that, I remember so many tapes renting them. Halloween, or Friday the 13th Part 5, when they're having sex oh, in the woods. Yeah. That one scene of uh, the chick's boobs uh, her real last name I, is Voorhees. Uh, Deborah I, Voorhees. I'm almost positive my Jason goes to hell sexy and might be a little uh, worn out. Anyway, uh, this is the uncut version. <laughs> Enough about tits. Yeah. Let's talk about well, it. Well, there's always room for tits. There's always room for yeah. tits. Hello, everyone. We're interrupting the episode because we're going to be at VHS Fest. That's right, at the Mahoning Drive-In in Mahoning, Pennsylvania. I've never been, 
everyone always goes, and I never go because I'm never invited. It's, but I will be going. It's near Jim Thorpe. Sure. <laughs> uh, what is VHS Fest, uh, Newt? The, Please tell us. The, it's uh, it's going to be on July 9th and 10th. And uh, it's going to be a night on the big screen of classic VHS movies, uh, Sorority Babes and a Slime Ball bowl rama I love that movie. Uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers. Classic. Good stuff. Trauma Team's going to be there. Leanna Quigley's going to be there. Love Who her. else is going to be there? Fred Olin Ray. Why women? Us. Oh. You, me, Justin, Crystal. And Fred Olin and Ray. Fred Olin Ray. <laughs> my friend Fred Olin Ray, who is a B-movie director. He's amazing. Yes. Uh, he is going to be there at the Hack the Movies uh, tent. Just in order to he directed tent. Bikini Airways. I was a big fan of that when he I was did. like 13. Yep. But yes, we will be there. Uh, we will be giving uh, we'll be giving away some signed yeah. tapes we have, and we'll have pictures and stuff that you can buy and we'll autograph. T-shirts, I think. We'll t-shirts, have. Yeah. the old Hack the Movies t-shirts. That We're going to blow them out. I haven't had that. I haven't used that logo in a long time, but we have so many left over because I got real overconfident a few <laughs> years ago, and it took a couple of years for that to take off. But you can buy an old Hack the Movies shirt. You needed a newt and you needed a crystal. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> well, we uh, hope it's, it's funny you leave out Johanna and Justin, but I'm cool with that. Uh, so, yeah, please join us on July 9th and 10th if you are in the area for VHS Fest. It's going to be awesome. We're going to be there. If anything, just come meet Fredo and Ray. Bye. Enjoy the rest of the episode. I, why do you have, always, <laughs> always tag my shit when I. <laughs> Bye. Uh, let's talk about. Independence Day yes. movie proper. Uh, the beginning starts with a plaque yeah. commemorating the alleged moon landing. Which I said we were supposed to have a guest today. We were supposed to have yes. my friend Eric Wilkinson who's a producer. Yeah. Um, and uh, I wrote little notes in there about you so that he would have to be dropped into our insanity and yeah. tell him that Tony says that the moon landing never happened just to get his reaction to it. But now that it's just us, it's just weird. I, I never <laughs> said it didn't happen. I'm just saying... I need a little bit more evidence. Well, I have you. Thing. I just wrote that script, and I have you from the nose down as Stanley Kubrick <laughs> because they had to fake the moon landing because the first astronauts came back as werewolves. <laughs> and I have that NASA gives him a note that says on the thing, the, sh the flag is moving, and then you would write down, go fuck yourself and circle it and hand it back to the NASA guy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see those letters he used to send to, like, 20th Century Fox? No. Like, yeah, like when they said they're- weird, because I've seen two- Stanley Kubrick documentary. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that. Yeah, twenty. They did twenty ten, the year we make contact. Oh yeah. And then he wrote all these like ridiculous emails to them. And I don't know if they're real or not, but I want to believe that they're real and it's awesome. You know. <laughs> I don't think he was writing emails when twenty ten. No, no, he was like, like writing letters. letters. Yeah. yeah. You said emails. Because uh, well, he he faked the moon landing. He must have had an early accident. Exactly. He's like the lady who wrote, "I know what you did last summer." She told Stanley Kubrick, "She's like, we're gonna have GPS. We're gonna have cell phones." Check our "I know, I know what you did last summer" episode to get mm -hmm. that reference. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So you have a problem with the uh, plaque on the moon. So the plaque, despite on the, the fact you hate America, even though in this case I'm not sure it happened, but keep going. There's so there's a plaque on the moon that's like you know we come in peace and they show the peace mm -hmm. part and it's uh, but it's all in English. Yeah. And they just assume that the aliens will speak the Queen's English. And I'm just like, well, what if that's the reason? Like, what if they're like, the fucking hubris <laughs> on these fucks. Let's go down there and fuck what, their shit up. What language would have been appropriate? Klingon. <laughs> you know? The aliens can't differentiate Klingon from English. They, they might. Know. No, but... The, but they've probably dealt with the only human that they've dealt with is Randy Quaid at this point. Oh, yeah, it, it's <laughs> so I want to get into that because I think <laughs> it's true. Um, I really, really do like the scene mm -hmm. of like you know the earth, the moon shaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what happened? Mm -hmm. uh, and like the cloud overturning it. You yeah, it looked like Star Wars, and it did. No, that whole thing where the ship is going over it. I, I yeah. wrote in my notes. I'm like, remember Star Wars? <laughs> There's so much of this movie, they're like, well, they're never going to remaster and re-release that movie. Let's just make our own Star Wars. Yeah. And then George Lucas goes, I'll show you. I'll show you. Yeah. <laughs> Put a Praxis explosion. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stroke my little chin. <laughs> and then. He's uh, the only person who's, as he gets older, his hairline goes down. Yeah. You notice that? The opposite. Yeah. Like, it, the, only I, other, uh, the only other one that does that is Elon Musk, but he's using plugs. Oh, yeah. You've see seen picture pictures of, of it. the late 90s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, ah. Well, he's got that LeBron James thing going on. Oh, fuck yeah. him. He ruined my crypto, uh, <laughs> my crypto uh, portfolio. Thanks a lot. Did you ever see that, you ever see that meme? Because he didn't he like name his kid like THX118 or some shit like that? Uh, yeah, it was something like Somebody that. Somebody made a meme where it was like, uh, come over, my parents are
parents aren't home and it's his son. He jumps out the window, turns into Starscream and flies <laughs> away. Oh, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of subtlety in Roland Emmerich. Films. Oh, 100 percent. So in this film about the world potentially ending, mm-hmm. cut to R.E.M. singing, it's the end of the yeah. world, which I think was used in some of the trailers. And yeah, it spots. was. Yep. Because the big takeaway from this movie was the White House exploding. That was the thing that everybody saw over yes. and over again, you know? Yes, and, uh, you know, some scientists, they get a signal. And isn't one of them Dean Devlin? Possibly. Yeah. I forgot to look into it. Uh, but they call Eric Avari. Yeah. Who was in Stargate. He's becoming a fucking uh, staple of this show. Yeah, he was in The Mummy, too. He was in The Mummy, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and I love that line where he's like, this better be an insanely beautiful woman or I'm hanging up. It's mm-hmm. like... Does he usually get calls from it? What yeah. if it wasn't insane? But is this supposed to be like the wow signal? Do you know what the wow signal is? I mean the wow signal. The wow signal was uh, this uh, scientist. They listened to like the satellite uh, microscope or whatever mm-hmm. the fuck it is. And some thing that was not an anomaly in space uh, made a signal. So the guy just wrote wow and circled it. And oh, it like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that. people who believe in like extraterrestrials and all that kind of stuff, they think that it was. It says, it says Cooper. Cooper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cooper. The owls are not what they see. <laughs> um, you know what reminds me? Remember, remember the bloop? Yeah, the underwater thing. Yeah, I remember the like people like were crazy. Mm. Like, what is it? What is it? You know what it was? It was a glacier. Yeah. Apparently, they knew like right away it was a glacier. But we had to make people think that it's like a sea monster or some shit. Yeah, people were like, what was it? And I think like because I remember looking back at it because I'm like, oh, did they ever figure it out? Apparently, scientists back then were like. Yeah, it's most likely a glacier yeah. ripping, and it made a lar- large enough sound because it was a giant glacier. It's like the the famous uh, the Patterson Gimli uh, Bigfoot uh, footage, where yeah. right before they filmed that, Patterson Gimli bought a gorilla suit from a like costume magazine yeah. that was the same thing. But people are like, "That's what they want you to think," and I'm exactly. like, "Who's they?" Or like the Montauk monster, the Montauk monster, right and it was here. just yeah, it was with with mange or something like that, you know? Well, no, not even mange. It was just dead. Oh, and it was decayed, and it didn't have its cute little face. Mm-hmm. And thought it was a monster. What's and that? That's uh, you're thinking of the El Chupacabra. Well, there's that and too. It's always just like a coyote or raccoon with mange. Yeah, <laughs> but what's that? Called? It's Plum Island, isn't it? Isn't that what it's called, Long Island? Because that's where they were going to send Hannibal Lecter. Oh, right. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of other hoaxes right now. Well, the, we are talking about aliens. The Loch Ness Monster, it was just a, a gynecologist yeah. put, like, a, a head on a boat. Right. You know? Oh, remember the the underwater, uh, the under, the, the sewer monsters? And it was just a, It was just a cluster of worms. Yeah, uh-huh. Together. Yeah. But there was another one that they tried to release, and it was these guys doing a commercial for, um, in England, about, like, cleaning out your gutters and shit like that yeah. and people clip that piece of the little CGI monster that's it poke its head out uh, and they thought it was like a real thing and I'm like what <laughs> why is everyone so stupid anyway yes wow signal it's probably yeah. wow mm-hmm. signal. uh and then who's Kevin Staff from Wonder Years that Robert Loja no uh who's the other one uh the Kevin's the Wonder Years dad is the guy the first one they meet with um he's also in the spirit but yeah they're just like wow what the hell is this that's scary. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the space uh, space command at the Pentagon is very confused as mm-hmm. to what the ship is. Yeah. But I think today our modern Space Force would have a better idea because they're more well equipped. And mm-hmm. Shout out to the Space Force people. Um, Steve Carell's the captain of that, right? No, that is a horrible show. <laughs> horrible show. I never saw it. That misrepresents the facts. And uh, our brave people at the Space Force are keeping our space clean and safe for us. And then you have an idea, like, what if there was a West Wing episode where it was just aliens? Yeah, like, what if, like, yeah, so what if, because you ever watched the West Wing? Uh, when it was on. It's a religiously. fairly realistic mm-hmm. drama. And, like, what if you went, like, three seasons of Ooh, that? Martin Sheen? Martin Sheen yeah. was in it, yeah. What if you went three seasons of that, and then all of a sudden there's an alien invasion episode, and the rest of the series becomes like that, and you're like, well, that came out of nowhere. Like, uh, my parents watch a lot of soap operas. Mm-hmm. And, like, once in a while, they'll do something really fucking goofy. Yeah, like... like there's aliens this time. It's like, what? No, yeah, like, there was uh, General Hospital. My mom used to watch it when I was a kid. I had to stop what I was doing because they're like, he created a weather control machine, and only Luke and Laura can stop it. And I went, you know what? I want to know more about this. <laughs> uh, and then we meet the president. Yeah. Bill Pullman. Bill Pullman. And his daughter, who is Mae Whitman. And I'm really sad they didn't bring her back for the sequel. Who's Mae Whitman? Uh, she plays uh, uh, maybe in Arrested Development. Oh, she one of the she was one of the exes in Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's on that show, uh, Bad Girls or something. I think. Oh shit, I didn't realize that was her. Yeah, I love Mae Whitman. Mm-hmm. And like they did the sequel, and I'm like, oh, well, she's like a big star now. They'll clearly bring her back, and they're like, no, it's the It Follows girl. I'm like, 
Oh, okay. You know, like they brought back Will Smith for the sequel. Yeah, yeah, that didn't happen. No. They had a picture of him. They did. They had a picture. And it was so fucking funny, too, because, like, in the, the dogfight scene in the yeah. in the same cliffs where the government chased the Hulk in the Eric Banner Hulk <laughs> movie, uh, he's, like, able to do all this shit, and he's super awesome. But then the second one, they're like, oh, yeah, he just died in an he experimental ship. Whoopsie doodle. <laughs> oh, because they wanted to bring him back in yeah. one. So, yeah, we, uh, the little girl, as the president's talking to the first lady, the little mm. girl turns on the TV, and there's all these pundits on there and yeah. disagreeing with the president because they hate America. They're basically you. Uh, Lou Dobbs did me dirty. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just hate freedom. Yeah. <laughs> and then we get a satellite. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I think it's an old satellite. It's not being used because it's like broken. Or yeah. Maybe that's just what satellites look like. I'm not a satellitologist. I don't know what the proper term is. Um, it's the one that brought Mac and me to Earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's what I want to know. Again, I don't know about satellites. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they show it, like, going near the mothership and getting, like, smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. And then it explodes. Satellites have a lot of gas on them. Well, right? are they made in Italy? <laughs> Good question. The, because we watched uh, Final Justice <laughs> for a commentary for uh, a, a, a video that's coming up. And everything in that movie that's remotely touched to explodes. Fair, to be fair, that was in Malta. It was in but, Malta. But, <laughs> but these, those could be Italy satellites. <laughs> which later Italian. explains why they cut the Italians out of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, they're going to find out about Literally our satellites. Every, when you guys watch this movie, and we'll be plugging it later on uh, this year. Uh, yeah, literally everything gets two bullet holes and then it just explodes. So we had to keep calling uh, Trisha yeah. to ask her in Italy, hey, are cars made of dynamite in Italy? <laughs> but yeah, so I always love this scene and like the satellite hits. I'm like, wait a minute. What's in the satellite that would cause that big of an explosion? Again, I don't know a lot about satellites. Let me know what what, what kind of fuel source. Well, that's where have. we have extra gasoline. We just keep it in satellites <laughs> and we bring them down. <laughs> oh, so you get the uh, the shots of the Statue of Liberty. Oh, yeah. Which <laughs> it's so <laughs> fucking stupid. Yeah. And so, like, that was an editing choice. Yeah. It's like Statue of Liberty from far away. Boom. Boom. The, the, Boom. the tablet she's holding. Boom. <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck? And then they do it on later in the movie. Yeah. And then they'll do it again for the rest of the it's movie. It's almost like a Devil's Advocate where it had constantly the time, yeah. time lapses. <laughs> uh, we find, uh, what you call it? Jeff Goldblum? Yeah. And he's sexy playing. Sexy ass uh, Jeff Goldblum. Sexy ass uh, Jeff Goldblum. He is uh, an annoying environmentalist. Who Which is funny because he was a voice on uh, Captain Planet and the Planeteers. Yes, he was. But it was about like the saving the environment. Episode, I think. I know, but still. Season. But yeah, uh, annoying environmentalist. He's hung up on his ex. Do you know Phil reason. Collins wrote the theme song to Captain Planet? You son of a bitch. You know I'm doing a joke. <laughs> you know I'm doing a joke. And you keep saying <laughs> yeah, I know that Phil Collins. Mm -hmm. I will unplug your mic. <laughs> So he's an. Go ahead. I'm not saying another word. He's an annoying environmentalist, hung up on his ex, and disagrees with his father. Basically, Newt. Anyway, I fucking wish I was Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> that dude. There's a picture of that guy that's getting older somewhere, but he doesn't. Like he stopped aging in 1998. Now he's like yeah. got like sexy like yoga but he, wife. He, he, he adds a little bit of aging to to not draw too much suspicion. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, I have white hair and yeah. it's like, okay. I loved him in uh, Thor Ragnarok. And they, oh, yeah. <laughs> how, old is, how old does that make you? And he pops his collar and goes. <laughs> <laughs> and they steal his orgy ship. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think these aliens have an orgy ship? Uh, no. Oh. Um, yeah, so they, uh, Goldblum says bye to his father. Mm -hmm. goes back to his work. Uh, and someone mentions, because the signals are going out. Yeah. The satellites are all, are all screwed up. And some guy's just like. Yes, yes, I love the X Files too. Uh, the the X Files were not a fan of Independence Day. No, which if you watch the later seasons of X Files, they don't have fucking room. No, at all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything after the movie could get fucked on the X Files. Uh, it would have been fine if season six was a way to wrap up everything. Yeah, but then they started a new plot line, and then they got rid of Mulder in seven. And yeah, no, because like the one that uh, like really pissed me off was the one where Mulder and the dude from It's Spinal Tap switch bodies. Oh, that like, one was fun. Uh, that oh, episode just gets on my fun. nerves. That was, yeah. that was fun. That was a two. And the old Native American lady, like she's got the like the mind of like a young fighter pilot, and she's like smoking a cigarette. Oh, that one's oh, that yeah. the worst one. Yeah, that season four. Okay. Anyway, uh, yeah, in the X Files movie, Mulder pees on a fucking poster. Mm -hmm. for yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, Harvey Firestein's great. He's great in this movie, yeah. David! <laughs> I, w I almost wish that he was the star of the movie. Like, Harvey Firestein versus aliens, and they're, the aliens are like, what the fuck is up with that dude's voice? <laughs> and his awful ADR in this oh, movie. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, he's, like, panicking and everything. Mm -hmm. and Jeff Goldblum's like, relax, relax, you're not recycling! Yeah, hey, there's Fruitopia <clears throat> here. I I'm saw that, and I was like, remember Fruitopia? <laughs> yeah, Fruitopia. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, every single human in this movie look, looks like they're the most 90s human ever. It is a very 90s. Yeah. It is super Everyone nice. in that office is haircuts and outfits and stuff like that. And I'm just like, ooh. We meet, uh, speaking of Mrs. Doubtfire, mm -hmm. Harvey Firestein was in yeah. that. Uh, what is it? We meet the, the daughter for Mr. Mrs. Doubtfire? Mrs. Doubtfire. And then the son or the brother looks like off-brand Keanu Reeves. Yeah. Like, he looks like he <clears throat> like Keanu Reeves wasn't left in long enough and they took him out early. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and they're getting yelled at by some guy because his crops are all fucked. He blames his dad. And mm -hmm. his dad is Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid, who my favorite part about this movie is Randy Quaid became this character in real life. Yeah, and he quoted the character in a clip that we're not allowed to show. <laughs> I'll never forget when all that shit was happening. Justin was like, did you see this? And I'm like, this is funny, but we should call someone. Like, he needs help. Like, <laughs> it's like when Dennis. Why is it Dennis on top of this? Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dennis Quaid's like, I got want nothing to do with this <laughs> shit. Uh, I really like the shot of the uh, saucers, mm -hmm. the attachment from the mothership. Yeah. Again, I've been talking about this a lot lately, like in Titanic and whatnot. Mm -hmm. 90s miniatures, man. That yeah. was like the highlight of miniatures. This movie has some great miniatures in it, too. Yeah, and yeah. I like that they look like sand dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they have like almost like a kind of dialed down Borg look yeah where they're they're they they look elemental kind of but not really like there's no like crazy hieroglyphics and shit it's like you know because no. it was probably again like the borg they probably went to other civilizations and just co-opted their technology yeah, you know because they're basically a locust <laughs> in this movie they just go from planet to planet you yeah know? but it really like hypes up the mothership because you never see the mothership until the very yeah end. Mm -hmm. but then you see the size of these ships and then you know that they're like hundreds that belonged on another ship yeah like how big is that fucking other exactly ship? uh but yeah they're all coming to earth now mm -hmm. so they send pilots mm -hmm. to get a closer look at it yeah so the thing's clearly on fire, burning up in our atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And they go into the cloud. And then they get killed by fire. Yeah. It's like, well, what were you expecting? Like, what What did you expect? You, like, It's not even like it was a cloud and they didn't know there was fire. So it's wait, so clearly hold on. on fire. So you're saying the American government isn't perfect. Is that what you're saying right now? I, well, the government. Well, the government isn't, but the military, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look, they were facing an enemy they knew. <laughs> but also, why did they go into the fire cloud? Why did they go into the fly fire cloud? Because they're like, hey, we got all this money for special effects. What are we going to do with it? I don't know. Fire? Sounds good to me, Roland Emmerich. You too, Dean Devlin. But it's just like, you couldn't think of anything else? Like, <clears throat> There's a couple times in this movie where I thought to myself, you couldn't think of anything else? Like, <laughs> They could have cut more out. Yeah. Like that scene, did. it's an exciting scene, but it doesn't make sense when you think this about it. This movie is two hours <laughs> and 30 minutes long. Two hour and thirty nine minutes. Oh, watched Jesus the version Christ. I did. So I put it on HBO, and I'm like, "Yeah, this isn't a long movie." And I was, I'm, oh, it's a long one. I'm watching it in my office, and I'm like, "This fucking movie is two hours and thirty minutes long." Like, well, it, it had to be. It has seven thousand characters. Yeah. In mm -hmm. it. And again, like Mars Attacks, uh, <laughs> set up like a uh, uh, Irwin Allen movie, like The Towering Inferno, The Poseidon Adventure, Earthquake. All these people in different places. They all have their own stories, and how all these stories intersect and then meet in the end. That's what yeah. all those movies were. So I get it. This was kind of the start of the big budget disaster movie again. Yeah, I, you know? I, I mentioned this a lot. Uh, this was one of those like Jurassic Park was the game changer. Yeah. And this was like, oh, you know, those corny alien movies. Now we're going to be big budget. Exactly. Alien movie. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, Jaws was a big budget version of a creature feature. Yeah. Star Wars was a big budget version of a 50s sci-fi well, like, movie. Jurassic Park sped it up. Oh, yeah, lot. big time. Because yeah, you got that. You got like, like the relic which mm -hmm. I covered is like a big budget monster. Congo, which you love. Congo was <laughs> an attempt at jungle adventure on a big budget. Didn't work and Now they're going to, I just re remember that they're doing a Jungle Cruise movie with The Rock and Emily Blunt for Disney. And I was like, wait, that's a thing? And then I was like, oh, yeah, that was supposed to come out like two years ago. Yeah. Guys, Stop watching Disney movies, please. Like Disney remakes and theme park themed movies. Can you just because like like I don't care. I don't watch it. Mm -hmm. It's like every time they announce one of those fucking things, I just gotta see people bitching about it nonstop. 
Like, can you believe who they picked for this role? And I can't- Ariel is black, and I'm like, Ariel's fictional, motherfucker. Ariel could be whatever. She's- she's a fish. And also, I don't care! Yeah, that's my- Stop! Just don't see the fucking I, That's it, yeah, like, oh, there's a new- Hey, did you see there's a new Transformers movie? I go, great. I don't care. You just, know? Just don't see the- They Sometimes gave Supergirl I'm short hair! Yeah, she does in the injustice. Oh, uh, uh, Superman got shot with a kryptonite bullet. I'm mad. Why? It happened in the it comics. Happens all the time. Yeah, like. <sighs> Although Supergirl's ratings did go down when they gave her pants on the TV show, and now I think they're canceling. Mm -hmm. so, uh, oh. you think, hopefully, you think the Flash guy would be like, "Let's not make that mistake." <laughs> <laughs> he takes his pants off. Like <laughs> <laughs> they called me the Flash. <laughs> <laughs> Stop! Just stop watching the Disney remake. Yeah, the, please, for the love of God, I don't feel like hearing people bitch about it. Mike, I, we know too many people. Yeah. give a shit about Disney. Mike Matei, Mike Matei, and I went out to lunch today, and we were talking about that. I was like, remember when you used to like care about pop culture? Remember like when you wanted to know things, like reading Starlog? <laughs> and now I'm just like, I, I almost like I'm cringing when I'm ready when they say news of something is gonna come out because I'm like. Everyone, everyone needs a job and a hobby. So Randy Quaid, he's an alcoholic loser. Yeah. He's crop dust in the wrong. Oh, in real life or like his, <laughs> oh, his character in Independence. I'm sorry. I got his confused His character in Independence Day is an alcoholic loser. Mm -hmm. He's crop dust in the wrong field. Yeah. He's going to get more drinks and people are making fun of him. I do like this timing though, where they're just like, oh, you were abducted by aliens. Did they do sexual things? Mm -hmm. And then like five seconds later, a UFO shows up. But my whole idea was what if they did do sexual things to him? And then they were like, like, have you ever like y y you hooked up with somebody and you're like, it's probably not going to happen again, but I'd really like it if that happened again. <laughs> and you kind of go through hoops to see if you could position yourself again. What if the mothership came back? Because it's, that is the best, <laughs> that man pussy they're is like, <laughs> they're like Randy Quaid. It never got better than that. Nope, it's like, yeah. Later, guys, we're going there. His finger lights up and goes, yo, if you got anything. But it, it's right like, here. it's like, it's like one alien that wants to do it, but mm -hmm. he can't just, so it's like the alien invasion is just a cover. It just really wants to get back to. Yeah. Right. It's, <laughs> like, he had a like, I really think we should conquer earth. And they're like, well, it's not that big. It's like, no, I think it'll be good. Yeah. And then uh, the humans are like, look, they destroyed DC. They destroyed New York. Give them Randy. Quaid. Give them Randy Quaid. <laughs> and then Randy, it's like the it's like a the ceremony in Star Trek Three for Spock, but it's like Randy Quaid. They remove his pants and like <laughs> the whole world watches as the aliens <laughs> to flower Randy Quaid to save humanity. They build statues to it. <laughs> Can we get Randy Quaid on the show? We probably could. I feel like he wouldn't leave if we invited him. I'll be like, yo, Walter Murdoch's here, and he wants to talk to you. And he'll Rupert Murdoch. Was it, who's Walter Murdoch? I have no idea who Walter Murdoch is. Well, he might not understand me on the call, and he's like, oh, Rupert, Ever uh, Rupert Everett. Yeah, Rupert Everett and Walter Murdoch from, are here. From Inspector Gadget? Yeah, and Boz Kanata's here as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. The other day, we were talking about, uh, we were talking about Independence Day. Mm -hmm. uh, we were explaining the sequel, how as mad the queen alien looks nothing like them. Yeah. <laughs> you were like, like, oh, it's like Boz Kanata. And I'm like, for, he's like, yeah, you know the Gungans? And I'm like, that wasn't that character's name. It's Boss Dance. I thought his name was Boz Kanata for some reason. For years, I thought that. <laughs> it's like, did you ever see that skit where it's like, you know, Grandma Tarkin. No, it's Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> oh, shit. I've been calling him the wrong thing this whole time. <laughs> so. Yeah. So Randy Quaid, they're going to build a statue of him being bent over by an alien. No, 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 I'm skipping past Okay. <laughs> uh, this is where we, we meet Will Smith. Yeah. But the little boy is running around. He he kicks a Godzilla toy as he's running past mm -hmm. the King Ghidorah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, I know that's next. Yeah. Like, do you think they knew that it was next? Probably. You think? Yeah. Because mm. that took a couple years to develop, too, so. That's true. That's true. But maybe not, though. Maybe they were trying to position themselves because, remember, Tim... Uh, uh, Jan uh, Debon bon. had to drop out at the yeah. last minute, and then I also think maybe it's just a coincidence. Like uh, Christopher Nolan's first film, following yeah. there's like a the guy's apartment has bats yeah. on it, and mm -hmm. there's like a Superman comic, and just by coincidence he ended up producing those. Or you have like in uh, 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 Night of the Creeps on yeah. the bathroom wall, it's spray painted Monster, Monster Squad rules. Oh, Halloween! They put the thing in there. Oh yeah, John Carpenter mm -hmm. ends up reading. Yep. So yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, enjoy my. Godzilla 98 trying. <laughs> um, so yeah, Will Smith finally shows up. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's just like not waking up for this shit. He's like, oh, earthquake. Eh. But he's peeing in like, and the windows where his neighbors can look in. 
Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I love the shot of the craft coming out of the smoke. That's awesome. That yeah, that awesome. is a great it shot. It still looks it's so still, good. Yeah, it still looks good. It still holds up. But again, well. it's like the people, him and his wife, like, they don't look up. Like, yeah. it's like dogs can't look up. Yeah. Isn't that but then remember in New York, when it's happening in New York, there's like a shot under the bridge, like kids playing basketball. Mm-hmm. And the, the aliens show up. It's just like the, everyone from every walk of life is just hanging out underneath the. Same yeah, that's bridge. the whole thing. Yeah, there's these like kid, '90s kids playing basketball, and then this like white-haired businessman walks out. I was like, <laughs> wait a minute, forget about the aliens for a minute. Why is he watching those kids? <laughs> and then there's a seven-car pileup at one point, and I said, New York drivers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Goldblum is, uh, you know, studying the signal Mm -hmm. and he realizes it's a countdown. Yeah. And since he's great at chess, he knows what that means. Checkmate. Also, do you think his dad is supposed to be Jewish in this movie? You know, he is. Okay. I was was getting a faint impression. They say it at the very end. Oh, okay. But they put a lot of subtle hints (laughs) in the movie. It got to the point where I'm like, who wrote this movie? Was this Dean Devlin and Roland Emmerich? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, like it almost got offensive at a point. Like, <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, uh, he tells Harvey Firestein, he's like, "You guys got to get out." Mm-hmm. By the way, everyone else in the cable company that he works for went to like a bomb shelter. Yeah, you never check in on those people. Are they okay? They're fine. Okay. Well, they were fine until they got out and their glasses fell off and they couldn't <laughs> read all the books. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he's like, you gotta tell, you gotta warn everyone. He's like, I gotta tell my mother, my brother, my lawyer. Forget my lawyer. Yeah, but he obviously says, fuck my lawyer. But oh, it's yeah. But it's yard in the movie, and it says, forget my lawyer. <laughs> it's almost like our, uh, what, what country is uh, getting to see Fast and the Furious first? Oh, I'm glad you asked. It is the Republic of China. It was 80 yard like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I went to a voice to text website because I was too lazy to come. Mm. All right, I don't know why Vivica a. Fox is so shocked that Will Smith has to go back to the base when there's fucking aliens. She's like, "You had off this weekend." It's like, yeah, until the fucking aliens showed up. Yeah, sorry, Jasmine. Yeah, and he would fit in with Mars attacks because he's like, they're fine. They're not going to start anything. Yeah, they didn't drive a million miles to start some shit. You know? <laughs> it's like, no, that's no, that's all they, they want. Yeah, <laughs> they went out of their way. Yeah, to come here because they wanted that sweet, sweet Randy Quaid, <laughs> Quaid man pussy. So, yeah, uh, Randy, speaking of Randy Quaid, mm-hmm. uh, he gets arrested and his kids are watching it on TV. Yeah. And I love they cut back to that guy. And he's like, the aliens abused him. Sexual. Oh, that was, that scene was really good though. <laughs> you ever get arrested? I'm just gonna do that. I'm oh, gonna like I'm like, dude, he's got a lot of problems. <laughs> if you <laughs> make stuff, if up. you don't do that, I'm gonna be offended. <laughs> he's very confused. All the time. <laughs> There's a video online of him dressed as Batman, saying he might be gay. I don't know. <laughs> so one of the things they cut out. Mm-hmm. Well, th- this scene is in the theatrical cut where Randy Quaid's daughter's hooking up with a guy. And he's yeah. like, you don't want to tie a virgin, do you? How t- many times a day do you say that to me? All the time. Yeah. All the time. I wish we had an HR department here. <laughs> Tony told me HR stands for harassment rules at Hack the Movies video, so <laughs> I'm worried. <laughs> anyway, uh, fucking, this becomes like a subplot that they cut out. Like, she just wants to get laid the mm-hmm. rest of the movie, and she meets another nice guy, yeah. and then... It leads to a thing later on where she tells the guy, you don't want to die a virgin, do you? And I'll tell you more about that scene later on. Holy shit. But they also cut out, uh, the the kid is yelling at Randy Quaid, mm. and a little bit of this is in there. Okay. I think he says, like, you're not my dad, you're just the guy who married my mom. Does he say that in theatrical cut? I don't remember. Yeah, because they look like they're, like, Hispanic or yeah, something. Yeah, I think the first two kids aren't Randy's, but the youngest one. The youngest one looks like it could be his kid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the youngest kid uh, has a medical condition. I forget exactly what it is. And he's like, I gotta buy a medicine. It's so expensive. It's McGregor syndrome. Yes. And the kid's <laughs> like, I don't care about my medicine. And he breaks it and shatters his only medicine bottle. Oh, no. That's why later in the movie, he pulls over to throw up. Because he's sick, but yeah. You, I always thought that was car sickness until I watched this version. So he probably has, like, his chemo or something. Yeah, like so that. that's like a... Those are two subplots with his kids that are just rightly trimmed out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gives a shit. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> so They're like, to look, the point, the characters didn't even need to be there. You only really needed the oldest brother. Yeah, exactly. To be honest. Because uh, he could just say at the end, like, tell my son I love him. Or something like that. Yeah. And then his son, he's like, he was my dad the whole time. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, 
Harry Connick Jr. is in this. Fucking Harry Connick Jr., man. My mom has his Christmas album. Oh, she does? <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, he's like the weird, like, you know, like, Justin with his Pokemon, they yeah. evolve. It was like, <laughs> it's like Harry Connick Jr. evolves into Joe Bob Briggs, who evolves into fucking the dude who <laughs> sang Wicked Game. What's that guy's name? He was in, uh, he was one of the SWAT guys in Silence of the Lambs. Oh, oh, uh, b -b 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 Chris, Chris Isaac. Chris Isaac, yeah. yeah. That is the sexiest fucking song ever. Like, if I could sing, I would sing that uh, song. Yeah. Do you know that he was David Lynch's college roommate? Is that why he Yeah. Because mm -hmm. he did that song for that one movie he did with Nicolas Cage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They shot two videos. For yeah. It, and then he was, yeah, he mm -hmm. was in Twin Peaks Fire Walk. Yep. Uh, he was anyway. in a music video for, uh, uh, Baby did a bad, bad thing. Oh, Eyes Wide, Eyes Wide Shut. Shut, yeah. <laughs> it is a good movie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so he's basically like, you're because he, uh, Will Smith gets denied going to NASA. Yeah. And he's like, you're never going to go to NASA dating a stripper. It's like, oh, and marrying a stripper, because he yeah. has to get married mm -hmm. to Jasmine. It's like, I don't think they can say, I'm, who knows? Maybe there's someone who's like, oh, I heard his wife's a stripper. That's a bad image for the American. Maybe. But like, I don't think that automatically disqualifies you. I think if you're a good enough pilot, they're like, all right, let him in. I've, if we ever like colonize another planet, I want to be the guy who brings strippers and like stuff there. And yeah. my tagline will be, they ain't nothing to do on Mars, but studying the rocks and knocking the boots. <laughs> but, but I disagree with Harry Connick Jr. Yes. As a sex worker myself on a website, I'm not allowed to talk about mm -hmm. on YouTube because then YouTube will be like, what are you doing? And then they get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, but I was very offended. Yeah, they're really mean to to exotic dancers in this movie. Yeah, uh, which, and then we cut to her exotic dancing. Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because no one's watching the dancer because they're watching the TV. And yeah. it's like, well, yeah, why did any of you go to work that night? <laughs> yeah, and again, so like in Mars Attacks where like field trips are happening after the Martians attack and yeah. stuff like that. If aliens are hovering over your city right now, we're closed. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I, it's 19, there's dial-up internet. You could look at titties on on the internet. <laughs> you know, get a couple AOL floppy disks. Yeah, but she's pissed. Yeah, that no one's paying and no one's paying attention. Uh, her friend Tiffany. Again, the writers Dean Devlin and, and Roland Emmerich were like, "What's a stripper name? Tiffany and Jasmine. Jasmine. Not a crystal in the bunch. I know you're missing know. out." <laughs> so yeah, they. Uh, she's talking to Tiffany. Tiffany's like, "I made a sign. Welcome Earth." Uh, and I've met a bunch of strippers. <laughs> Tiffany is surprisingly accurate. <laughs> like, I feel like the strippers I know would 100. percent But it's funny because in thing. part two, uh, Vivica A. Fox is a doctor, so she was stripping to put herself through medical school, and it's the first <laughs> time in history that actually was a thing. <laughs> Chris, Chris Rock has a whole joke about. <laughs> oh, that. I never got a smart lap dance in my life. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> my <theory. laughs> um. So this scene, she tells her not to go to the party. Mm -hmm. And then, in the extended cut, we find out her son's at the strip club in the office. Oh, no. Playing, this time, with Mecha King Ghidorah. He's got a real Godzilla thing. Yeah. This was the mid-90s, and even before... Like, the reason kids like me got so excited mm -hmm. for the Godzilla remake is because the a lot of the Japanese ones were coming out on video, yeah. and there were so many Godzilla They were on toys. TV a lot, too. Like, yeah. uh, the Sci-Fi Channel... Originally used yeah. to run a lot of those. So, so we were growing up watching these, the new and old Godzilla mm -hmm. movies with the brand new toys. Yeah. And then we found out there was a newer Godzilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so she's like taking him and her boss comes in. An Italian gentleman named Mario with a mustache. Oh. Heavy set Italian gentleman. <laughs> he's basically Well, like, he left his job as a plumber to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's like, what are you doing with the security here? <laughs> and she's like, you find a babysitter now. And he's like, you leave your fire. And she's like, goodbye, Mario. And I'm like, <laughs> of course, his name was fucking. And as she left, he made the sound when And Mario again, again, I'm struggling to say Mario. Because as we all know, I say Mario. I say Mario. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna put a rule here saying no Mario. No Mario. Is it? Is do you say a data or data? Do you ever see that thing? It's like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, let me see. When data's in this movie, he is. Red Spiner. So I don't know if this was in the theatrical cut, but uh, Goldblum and his dad. He gets his dad to drive because he doesn't have a drive. That's in the movie. Yeah. No, that is. That yeah. is. And they're headed to the White House. Mm -hmm. But on the way there, like, because they're the only ones going to mm -hmm. see. 
suddenly a bunch of cars are in the opposite direction. And yeah. Judd Hurst has to do reckless driving and drive through a barricade. No, that's not in that there. In the, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Because it's a stupid scene that definitely could have been cut out. They never mentioned it again. The car doesn't look damaged. But I was like when his They wanted to give Judd Hersh an, an action. action. Scene. Well, he has one in part two. He's driving the bus. Uh, they, uh, he's like, yeah, he's like, they got people to take care of this. If they need HBO, they'll call you. Because <laughs> <laughs> he makes fun of them. He's like, oh, you went to all those schools. Mm -hmm. and now you're doing cable? <laughs> yeah. But him and his dad have the best chemistry in the movie. They're the only ones who feel like actual characters. Yeah. Like Will Smith is just there to like shout buzzwords at the screen, yeah. you know? So they send a helicopter. Mm-hmm. To communicate. The welcome the wagon. A welcome wagon to communicate with the ship. And it's got like lights and stuff. I don't know. Was that Morse code? I don't know what the hell. They, they should have used to. music like in Close Encounters. Yeah. And then the aliens just shoot it. Yeah. And it's like, why even bother? Like, why even bother? No. Like, it, no, they have no weapon that could affect you. As, no. As we learn. Uh, and it's just like, you're going to blow them all up in a second anyway. Yeah. Why not? Why not give them a heads up? Exactly. But um, we needed another action scene. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're seeing around the world. Mm hmm. Around, e the, world, around the world. Around the world. Around the world. Uh, everyone preparing, to, you know, with the UFOs. Mm -hmm. And there's a street leading all the way up to the Empire State Building. Have you been to New York? Yes. Okay. There's no street that just leads up to the Empire. It's in the middle of like a block. Like there's no. Well, maybe, the MetLife building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, like they framed it as if it were the MetLife, which I forget. Is it the Citibank building? I forget what it is now. Uh, but they frame it as if it's the road leading up to the MetLife yeah. building. I'm like, that's not where the Empire State Building It's It's set up like the one in Wayne Tower in the Dark Knight. Yeah, in like Chicago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is a real tower. Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe it was like a forced perspective. They have another building in front of it. It's like Disney. <laughs> they make things look like they yeah. blend in. Um, wh where are they in LA? What building is that? It's not the Die Hard building, is it? No, they're the one that Tiffany's on top yeah. of. I forget what building. I thought it was like the, ta no, it wasn't the Tower Records one. I don't remember. Yeah. I have to look up. It's a building it and it's full of stupid fucking idiots who deserve to die. <laughs> <laughs> and Hari Fire scenes like on the phone with this therapist, mm -hmm. Dr. Katz, I think. Which I said, was that supposed to be Dr. Katz, the, t the cartoon? Remember the 90s cartoon Dr. Katz? Yeah. It was like a squiggly animated. There's One of our, Yeah, our yeah. Cracked magazine mm -hmm. has Dr. Katz with yeah. the South Park kids. So I was like, oh, Dr. Katz, that's good. <laughs> um, you could. He's like, for this much money, you could put me through to his house in the Hamptons. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Jeff Goldblum's there telling the president, it's like, mm -hmm. they're counting down. They're about to strike. But that was after, like, apparently he punched the president once. Yeah, you, you find out that uh, Jeff Goldblum's ex-wife is like the press secretary yeah. or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and he thought she was sleeping with the president. Yeah. So he punched the president. I like dad's like, you punched the president? He's <laughs> like, he wasn't president. <laughs> <laughs> and then the president walks in. He's like, I don't have time for this. <laughs> <laughs> but he basically tells him like, hey, uh, they're counting down. They're about to attack. They're and using guess our own satellites against us. Right, because yeah. they need to bounce the mm -hmm. signal off to communicate. And he draws a thing about like how the earth and yeah. all that. So, uh, And I think we forgot to mention the president's an ex-war hero. He's like a he pilot. He was a from fighter pilot. Yeah. yeah. And so was... Randy Quaid, he was a yeah. Vietnam fighter Vietnam, pilot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, let me see here. Everybody, it's like in certain movies in the 90s where everyone knows karate. Oh, you know, yeah. <laughs> like a Cynthia Rothrock movie, everyone knows kung fu. In this one, just everyone knows how to fly a plane, you know? So, yeah, the aliens attack. Mm hmm. And it's awesome. It's awesome. There's yeah. some, I will agree, there's some dodgy blue screen mm -hmm. compositing. Yeah. They weren't quite there yet. They got better. But all the later. miniature explosions are The miniatures fucking are great. great. And you know how they did those, right? Because they also yeah. did it for Team America. Yes, yep. Uh, they put the sets vertical. Mm -hmm. And then they shoot the fireball up at a high speed. Yeah. So then it looks like the fire... Because you can't make fire move vertical. Exactly. Like uh, and it works really, really well. But there's so many weird character moments. Mm -hmm. Like the guy who's filing paper. Yeah, okay. So, uh, like, it, again, as much as I like Batman, uh -huh. as much as I like Batman versus Superman, there's like the guy conducting business while gods are fighting outside. And it's like, what? Like, no. <laughs> but yeah, but later on, we get them back because we, we, one of our nukes goes into the aliens oh, yeah. offices. <laughs> I love he's just like, um, oh, working late. Yeah. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Burning the midnight oil. What's that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, in theaters, it's like in Superman two where there's like gods fighting, and the and guys like on the phone. The, or though the other guys on, yeah, the, the guys on fucking roller skates with uh, French fries, and it's like, stop it, stop it, Richard you leave, Lester. You live, you leave <laughs> Richard Lester alone. <laughs> he loved America. <laughs> he was French though, wasn't he? Whatever. Or British. Whatever. He made it uh, Hard Day's Night. Whatever. We finally released the Donner cut. <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, this was the most horrifying thing in the world to watch as a kid because mm-hmm. it looks so real as a kid in the nineties. Like, yeah, it's oh, pretty. I, I again like. My mind goes places sometimes. Like, well, I used to think, like, well, what if there was a zombie outbreak? Like, what happened? Mm. What if aliens attack tomorrow? And your brain starts going, like, what would you do? And I was like, when I saw this as a kid, I was like, oh, no matter what, we're fucked. You know? You know what I would do? I'd burn the midnight oil in the filing. Yeah, in the tapes. tapes. <laughs> this place is so full of lead paint, though. You might survive. Like, I'm going to cut to me just being like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, Someone forgot to return Dirty Dancing to Havana Nights. <laughs> hey, what's that sound outside? <laughs> we don't have Dirty Dancing two. We have both. We have two copies of Dirty Dancing one, but not Dirty. Yeah. Dancing two. How about uh, Basic Instinct two? No, we don't. No. Have that. I'm sorry. Thank Vivica you. A. Fox we is have r- home, sweet, home Sweet Home Alabama. And that's a good one with Reese one. Witherspoon. I like Vivica, Vivica A. Fox and her dog Boomer. Yeah. <laughs> Come oh. on, Boomer. Okay, like, what Boomer. What's the dog doing? Dog's like, huh? Yeah. Oh, someone said my name. Like, wouldn't you have been following them the whole time? <laughs> uh, oh, when she's in the tunnel? Yeah. The tunnel from Wh- daylight? Which, by the way, I get that they were like in a little thing to avoid mm-hmm. the fireball. That much fire going through the tunnel. Is oh, they're suck, dead. They're going to suck the oxygen out. And Even if they don't get burned, they're going to suck the oxygen Yeah, and how about like, oh, I know I can get into this thing by kicking it, but I'm not going to tell any of these people. They're all dead now. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, she does pick up people along the way later yeah. on. Uh, especially a character you would hate that I'll get to. Well, uh, uh, but after she finds, just like in every movie we watch, there just so happens to be the keys above the thing. That happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the shot in New York destroyed looks awesome. It's awesome, yeah. With, With the, the statue. fucking Statue of Liberty's down. Maniacs. Mm-hmm. You blew, blew it, it up. up. <laughs> <laughs> the apes go like, you know what? You guys can keep this planet. We're going <laughs> to... Oh, shit. There goes the planet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Harry Connick Jr.'s name is Jimmy Wilder. Yes, and he dies in this, and I want to believe that this is the prequel to Van Wilder, and the reason that Ryan Reynolds acts out is because he grew up without a dad. <laughs> <laughs> and what's this Black Knight thing? Black Knight Satellite? What? Oh, okay, so they're called the Black Knights. That's their, okay. their group. Again, in UFO mythos, there's a piece of space debris that's apparently in our atmosphere, yeah. but it looks like, in certain camera angles, it looks like a person. Uh, so they call it the Black Knight. Okay. And then there's like a story about Nikola Tesla that no one can verify that he made contact with a satellite in our atmosphere. But all it really is is probably like the Russians accidentally released like a heat blanket and they caught it at a certain angle. Yeah. But if you look it up, we'll put a picture of here what the Black Knight is. But I thought, okay. yeah, I thought that was a cool, I was like, that's really fucking stupid, but that would be cool. So I wrote a whole screenplay about it once. So we need an action scene. Yeah. Uh, they all go to attack the one UFO. Mm hmm. And the uh, the UFO. Uh, oh, this is after he's like, is there a problem, Will Smith? And he's like, I just want to get up there and kick E.T.'s ass. Yes. Uh, so the space. And that's the dad from the show with the Down syndrome kid that I used to watch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I got to mm-hmm. confirm or deny if that was my co-star. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, the uh, spaceship opens up and like just thousands of fighter ships. Yeah. Come but why? Yeah, just let them fly into the fucking thing and die, or yeah. go back down there and be like, we're just gonna blow everything up. It looks awesome. Don't get me wrong, it looks yeah. awesome. This fight, this whole scene's great. Again, it's because really cool. remember Star Wars? Yes, but it, I mean, it's not as good as Star Wars, but on a, an effects level, it was way cooler it's because it was in the daytime. You needed those weird matte lines. Like it looked nice and smooth for the '90s, uh, and it got me excited for the prequels. Uh- <laughs> well, no, you would have had uh, the re-releases. In 97. Yes, but mm-hmm. those were scenes I already saw before. But you see Independence Day. Yeah, but you didn't get to see something awesome like the new rock song in Jabba's Palace. Bad, 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 bad. <laughs> Which, remember, we like. Because George Lucas did nothing wrong. Remember that. That's that's the narrative we go by. And what's what's music called in Star Wars? Jizz. Jizz. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, the, the, the dog fighting is awesome. Mm-hmm. When they're going through the canyon. Yeah. And again, mm-hmm. more miniature. Miniatures on blue screen. Mm-hmm. But composited pretty well. Uh, Harry Connick dies. Yeah. He takes his mask off. And he's like, put your mask back on. That's an order. And I was like, wait, is he his boss? But it's like, why couldn't he breathe? Did they shoot something? I forget. I'm not a fighter pilot. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Also, why did the UFOs follow them into the canyon? Yeah. Like, they can't destroy you. Your shields work too well. Mm -hmm. Be like, all right, good. They flew away. Yeah. Like, they should only be like, get away from the ship. They're like, we need to find Randy Quaid so that we can (laughs) impregnate him. So, yeah, the... uh, Ask the the Fresh Prince. (laughs) Harry Connick dies. Mm -hmm. Uh, Will Smith gets one of the ships destroyed. And then another one he crashes. Mm -hmm. 
Um, with with a with a parachute. Yeah. So, about their shields. What exactly do they deflect, and how can they tell what is a weapon and what isn't? Because wouldn't the shields deflect the parachute? Yeah. Okay. Or because they have the thing, it would just hit it and go around it because they're in a bubble of energy. Yeah. Or it would burn up on it. Yeah. And then be like, what the fuck, Will Smith? Like, yeah. Yeah. Why why do their shields only work some of the time? Because the movie had to happen. Because he had to say, welcome to Earth. Welcome to Earth. Welcome to Earth. All right, so they're in exoskeleton. What if he fucking punched it and his fucking hand just like explodes? That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> so they're like these exosuits mm -hmm. that look awesome. Uh, I think Patrick Datopoulos designed this, the same mm -hmm. one who did uh, Godzilla, Stargate, uh, your favorite Batman movie, versus Batman Superman. Superman. Patrick Datopoulos, he's the Topolis. Yes. <laughs> fucking ass. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the they look really awesome. Mm -hmm. They're kind of Giger-esque, yeah. uh, but not quite. No. Uh, but yeah, they're supposed to be in these super cool... Wait, can I take that again? Patrick Totopoulos, his work is top not <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been drinking this time. I just had... I'm very tired. So their suits are very strong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm. Why would it... Why did Will Smith... Why was he able... Why is one punch from an earthling able to knock this thing out? Because Will Smith... For a long time! Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's knocked out for a long time! Well, or it allowed itself to get knocked out so it could get into the... Uh, the base and like find its its three friends. No, because as soon as it's in there, it's like get me out of here. Okay, <laughs> just saying. I don't know their plan. <laughs> I don't speak alienese. And then he doesn't see any of those RVs coming either, which I'm like, what the fuck? Oh yeah. yeah. And then when they get to Area Fifty, everyone just doesn't see the caravan of RVs. No, or UFOs in the sky. Or UFOs in the sky. Uh, but yeah, so. Let me see here. We get a couple more scenes of Randy Quaid's kid being sick mm -hmm. and his daughter wanting to get laid. Uh, some some boy is like, I got medicine for your brother. Mm -hmm. She's like, hi. And the dad's like, get out of here. She, he's, she's like, I got medicine for you right here. <laughs> it's good for what ails you. <laughs> and then Norad is destroyed. Which I said, now what if this was Santa Claus's chance? Like we've been <laughs> tracking him all these years and now he's like, and now my brothers, we rise and elves and fucking... <laughs> Misfit toys attack America. So everyone's arguing, mm -hmm. uh, and David is or Jeff Goldblum is yelling at them, and people were giving him shit. And then his dad's like, "You be nice to my son, David." Mm -hmm. He's like, "You know all along about uh, Roswell Area Fifty One," and they're like, "Shut up, old man. Yeah. That's not real." And then CIA guy, or the, the he was the Secretary of State. Secre he was ex CIA yeah. Secretary mm -hmm. of yeah. Defense, and he's like, "Who's well. who is that guy? Who's in everything?" Yeah. Uh, he I thought he was the dad from Cool as Ice at first. No, he's no, not. he's not. But but yeah, he's all like, uh, you know, Area Area Fifty One. That that's actually true. He should have waited another beat when fucking Dear John and the other ones were out of the room, so that because civilians aren't in the room and been like, oh no, yeah, we knew about it, but they, you know, they call him out on it later. But a hundred percent, once UFOs showed up, he should have been like. All right, Mr. President, we got to take you to Area 51. Yeah. There's a lot I got to debrief you on. Mm -hmm. Like, he, like it's weird he kept it quiet. For and the whole long. time, Robert Loja's like, you should have let me deal with it. I'm <laughs> Robert Loja. Robert Loja. <laughs> uh, so Vivek A. Fox is Remember when they have to kill him on the... Oh, you never watched Sopranos. I know, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. He's in one of the later... One of the mid-seasons. Yeah. And he gets out of jail and everybody's happy he's home. But he's just like a pain in everybody's fucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> so Vivek A. Fox... She gets that truck. She's mm. picking up people. And yeah. then um, there's this one crazy guy. Or actually, not crazy. That's offensive. Yeah. He's very religious. He's got a cross painted on his head. And he's got a sign in the mm -hmm. Bible. And he's like, we're all going to die. And she's like, you want to hop in with us? We're going to El Toro or Del Toro or whatever. And he's like, no. Yeah. I love Jesus. He's like quoting scripture and stuff. And she's like, all right, goodbye. What happens? That was cut out. What happens to our religious structure if aliens show up? Yeah, we just rewrite it. As a, yeah, well, you know, <laughs> keep moving the goalposts. Yeah, we keep moving. <laughs> um, oh, I love uh, Will Smith when he's dragging the alien in mm. the desert. He's just like, what's that smell? And he's just kicking it. And apparently it that was an ad lib. Huh? That was an ad lib. Yeah, it's he like added like a yeah. ad lib. And then that's where he gets picked up. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, but, the president goes to Area 51. Yeah. And uh, Adam Baldwin is there. Well, the area goes to, he goes to Area 51 because they just nearly escaped the most famous scene in the movie when the White House explode right, right and it right. takes out the other helicopter right um if i was his kid i wouldn't stop screaming 
Like I, I would scream every scream possible the yeah. entire time. Just, Everyone in that ship should be like, you know, just screaming constantly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Adam Baldwin, welcome mm-hmm. as president there. Yeah. And of course, Adam Baldwin, he's very famous for helping start Gamergate. I think that's his claim to fame. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He was uh, instrumental in the beginning of it. Oh, uh, shit. I didn't know that. And then Brent Spiner shows up. Brent fucking Spiner with his long hair and his and I, I, really I, high-waisted yeah, pants. I love he's like, they don't let us out much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's pretty great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the inside of uh, of Area 51 is kind of cool looking. Yeah. Too. They have like the Cerebro door from the X-Men right, movies, right. you know? <laughs> So, yeah, he shows them the alien spaceship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he's like, yeah, we've had it since the 50s. Uh, it just turned on recently. Yeah. And that's when he goes, like, the last 24 hours were really exciting. He's like, everyone just died. He's yeah. Like, All right. Oh, sorry. Uh, he's like, oh, by the way, we have their bodies. And they're like, what What? What, what are their strengths? And I go, he's just like, oh, they're just kind of assholes. Uh, they're pretty easy to kill once you get them out of their suits. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's like, these two die. That one died later. Yeah. Uh, and they look like your classic. Mm-hmm. Except head. they have like the big like shell head thing in the yes, back, yeah. and no mouths, no mouths, yeah. Uh, telepathically, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then uh, what should we call it? Steven Spielberg ripped them off for War of the Worlds. Yeah, they did look. Yep, they looked mm-hmm. very similar. I so. hate that movie. I hate that movie because I gotta revisit that movie. We have it. I gotta revisit the, it. The the nine eleven parables are so embarrassingly on the nose. Yeah. When Will when Will Smith when Tom Cruise is like first off Tom Cruise in that movie throwing a baseball. Or a football was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in my I entire life. That, yeah. But also, it's like I know you feel you have to fight, but to, 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 and I'm just like, okay, get we get it. 9/11 just happened. Stop, yeah. stop. We go to the movies to to fucking move on from this shit, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, and the, ugh, just the grief porn movies that came after that. Like, yeah. remember the one that uh, one with Tom Hanks and it was like extremely loud, extremely oh, close yeah, or something. Extreme, or what? Loud, incredibly close. Or the one with uh, the one with um, Batman. Oh, I talked about this on uh, my bonus episode. Yeah. That, uh, me and Royce did Tenet, and I told him about the ending of that movie. Remember me? And he's mm-hmm. like, he's like, is that a real movie? You didn't believe me when I told you about. No, it. No, no. Oh, I wasn't the one. I've who, seen that movie. Okay, who did I tell about it? And they didn't believe. Me. I forget who it was. Yeah. But yeah. Whenever you tell people the ending of Remember Me, they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, it would be like on the West Wing if a fucking alien invasion happened. <laughs> you have this like romantic like drama, and then fucking nine eleven happens. No, like, build up to it at all. No. It was very jarring. And whenever I tell people about it, they say, well, I'm never going to forget that. <laughs> so. <laughs> so Will Smith shows up. Will Smith shows up. He's like, oh, we need clearance. He's like, oh, what about this? And he shows him the alien. He's like, let him in, let him in. Well, yeah, they should have let him in, not everybody else. But they do let everyone else. And in the extended cut, Randy Quay goes around being like, my son needs medicine. And then finally, Brent Spiner's like, oh, my God, someone get this kid the medicine. And then the daughter's like, I'm trying to get my dick sucked. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, someone really should have explained sex to her better. <laughs> <laughs> my dad was Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah. Uh, but while that's happening, uh, Brent Spiner is like talking to um, Jeff Goldblum mm-hmm. and he's like showing him the ship. <laughs> he's just like. He's like, yeah, we don't know how any, we don't know how this works. Yeah, and then like Jeff Goldman's like, yeah, you know, it's a relay, we can match it up. And mm-hmm. he's like, you're making us look bad. <laughs> <laughs> but I love earlier in the movie, mm-hmm. uh, the at the White House, his ex-wife is like, don't touch anything. Yeah, and then Brent Spiner does it to him. He's like, why does people keep telling me that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> touching everything. <laughs> Again, Jeff Goldblum is the best part of this movie. Yeah. So they're getting ready to like do the uh, autopsy and stuff, and Which, I think I think Will Smith says, "Guess who's coming to dinner?" And like I just the I watched this in Star Trek Six back to back, and they both have "Guess who's coming to dinner" jokes. I'm like, I did not expect. Yeah, that. I don't think they understand the context of that movie. It made more sense in Star Trek Six. Yeah, it made way more sense. But they're doing like they're like start the cameras because they're doing the alien autopsy, and Fox was famous with. Jonathan Frakes from yes. Next Generation for the alien autopsy thing, and then the producer was like, well, the rest of it was fake, but two frames are real. You guess which ones. And I was in, like, fifth grade when this came out, and yeah. I was like, I was like, turn the TV off. X-Files made fun of it. Yeah. The, that episode where they find the tape, and mm-hmm. like, Boulder, this looks faker than the one on the Fox Network. <laughs> we find out they destroyed Philadelphia. Yeah. Damn it. I know. That's where Will Smith's from. I know. Born and raised. Mm, On the playground is where he spent most of his days. Until he joined the Air Force and started dating a stripper. Yeah, I guess we already did that joke. Yeah, we kind of did Anyway, (laughs) Uh, You know what? I don't think that the aliens would fare too well against Philadelphia. I think that the feral (laughs) Mad Max people of Philadelphia (laughs) would 
form a human ladder to the mothership. <laughs> and then once we get on it, the aliens go, yo, this ain't worth it. Like, <laughs> everyone, the Kensington lean. And we take... <laughs> So uh, I love when uh, we don't know what a John is. We can't fight them. <laughs> no one knows what a John is. I love uh, Vivica A. Fox. She's like talking to the first lady. Mm -hmm. And she's like, yeah, I'm a dancer. And she's like, oh, ballet. You're like, no, exotic. Yeah. Hey, it's good money. Mm -hmm. She's like, oh, okay. She, I love she's like, uh, thank you for not. I, she's like, I didn't think you'd recognize me. She's like, I didn't want to say anything. I voted for the other. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like that line. So the one doctor in the autopsy room, mm -hmm. you mentioned he's the guy from Seven. Yeah. And the Affleck Daredevil, he's mm -hmm. also an alien resurrection. Yes, he is. Yep. He's uh, the dude who's like, you put that thing on him. Oh, he made me fucker. Yeah. He made me fucker. <laughs> yeah. You know uh, what else he's in? He is a recurring minor character on Married with Children. Yeah. He's the guy who's always directing the commercial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's in uh, He's in a really fucked up episode of uh, Law and Order Special Victims Unit uh, where he believes that he's he's like schizophrenic mm -hmm. and he believes that there's like these aliens out there that are like trying to get him and like he tries oh, to because he, of this? he kidnaps his son and stuff like that and they give him medicine and he's okay at the end. You know? <laughs> I don't think it quite works like that, but okay. Why would Ice T lie to me? <laughs> uh, I got news for you, Tony. That means you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great episode. It is a great episode. They did a Gamergate episode as well. They Remember did. that whole? They got heavily criticized for it. And he, yeah, he's like, I read that on Kotaku. And I was like, Ice T had never heard that word before Nobody, that day. I guarantee you, Ice T does not read Kotaku. No. Kotaku is garbage. <laughs> no, <laughs> Kotaku front page my Paperboy 3 video. Yeah, what have they done lately? I don't know. I didn't know it still existed. <laughs> If somebody's not talking about me, I don't look at it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, movieweb.com. Relax. Yeah, that was awesome. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> Thank you for having hacked movies. I did. I did it because I knew that I would get press. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do wish... nothing but look out for my friend Tony. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I wish we got more scenes with the exoskeleton. Yeah. Because we never actually get to see it like walking around mm -hmm. with the exoskeleton. Yeah. And this is the 90s. It wasn't the less is more rule. They no. could have showed it more, but uh, the exoskeleton school, they open it up, it like mm -hmm. splits open, and I had the toy, and the toy you would pinch, and it would open oh, up. Oh, that's that. right. They did make toys for it. And they came, we mentioned it in Mars Attacks. I forget when this mm -hmm. gets released. In. This is before Mars Attacks. This is before yeah. Mars Attacks. Mm -hmm. Wow. Really wish we'd record these in order sometimes. Anyway. Well, no, we had to get this one out closer to that's the true. actual holiday. So this and Mars Attacks. For the Attacks. country that you love so much. Yes. This and Mars Attacks came with uh, mission discs. Yeah. Little floppy discs that you would buy with the toy and mm -hmm. you put it in your computer and you play a little mini game. And yeah. It was terrible. Uh, but yeah, the toy was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the jet. And I think I might have the little alien that goes inside the exosuit. Did they just repaint the Jeff Goldblum Jurassic Park figure? I think I did have... No, I had the Will Smith figure. I had the Will Smith Remember figure. when Dennis Nedry looked nothing like Dennis Nedry? Yeah. Dennis Nedry funny. looked more like Ray from the real Ghostbusters. <laughs> Speaking of marketing, can we see it? Ooh. Oh, God. The uh, tape had a holographic... Oh. I'll get a picture of it if it's not Very cool. Uh, yeah, so the exoskeleton's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, the alien wakes up and starts messing with their heads. Yeah. It's just like, me, me, me. Mm -hmm. They're like, ah, it just yeah. kills all of them. They do it to hit, they do it to Brent Spiner and then they do it to the president as well, which plays into the yeah. sequel. Yes. Uh, but yeah, I like how he can just like, he puts his thing around him. He's like talking through. That the was that. This is my favorite scene in the movie um, where he's like wraps his tentacle around him. He's manipulating him like a yeah. ventriloquist dummy. And I just, cause I always love the like, no peace. No. <laughs> Release me. That alien should have been smarter. Like, they're mm -hmm. not letting me out of here. I they, always, they literally in the room across from his three dead aliens is like, oh, I always do that whenever people post pictures, like, oh, I have to take my cat to the vet today, and it's a cat in the thing. And I always just put that little thing. It's like, Release me. <laughs> I love, he's like, Maybe we can get some peace. No peace. Mm -hmm. What do you want us to do? Die. But then <laughs> the, the, the president's freaking out. Yeah. Because he's sending him signals for some mm -hmm. reason for plot convenience. Yeah. Uh, but I love when Robert Loesch is like, is that uh, glass bulletproof? And he's like, no. And it's like, wait a minute. Brent Spiner's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not that. I'm just like, wait a minute. The alien didn't, he didn't think to punch the glass. To, 
like, did he just assume it was? But he was giving them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Like, well, clearly they wouldn't put me in a room with non-shatterproof glass. <laughs> clearly, was, and may, I feel like when the guy said that, it's not bulletproof. The alien was probably like, oh fuck, I oh should, man, I should have threw something at the. Yeah. Because <laughs> then he could have had it running around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, with its tentacle. weird, it has got like the weird chicken legs too. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like they just hoisted it up. You I know? think the second one they actually have like a proper fight scene. Yeah. It, uh, but I haven't. I only. It'd be kind of cool if they did one where they like re retroactively use their body armor for, like, soldiers' body armor. That'd be yeah, kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Oh, yeah, so the president's just like, oh, yeah, they just use every single resource and they move on. Mm -hmm. Every fucking thing had to have an environmental message. Yeah. They're still doing the environmental messages. To, I think in Tenant, they're like, the, the future, it sucks. So the future wants to kill the past because they destroy the world. It's like, how much longer are we going to? I'm just, I, I know I'm never going to have grandkids, so I just stand outside with aerosol cans now. <laughs> My neighbors told me to stop, but fuck them. You know what's weird? <laughs> Hollywood never, like, thanks us. They make all these movies lecturing us, and it's like, well, we cut down on paper mm -hmm. and, like, trees and stuff because we moved to digital. Do we do we get a thank you for that? And Hollywood's like, no. 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 Here's you should another still feel bad because you used to do it. Yeah. Here's a movie that makes you feel bad. It's like, all right, well, thanks, Hollywood. I'm not going to skip that. I think, gonna go, I think I'm going to watch Roadhouse and Independence Day until again you so stop, I can feel good. Until you stop polluting, we're going to keep making Paul Blart movies. <laughs> that was my... Remember when Sony got hacked? Yeah. My whole idea was, what if the terrorist organization said, you either make Paul Blart 2 the Academy Award winning best picture, or we attack a major American city, and then we have to do it? <laughs> and it's like the Randy Quaid thing, like we have to send, uh, what's his name, Kevin James out there. <laughs> so Will Smith just steals a helicopter, because he just assumes his girlfriend is going to be at the destroyed base. And if you can fly a jet, does that automatically mean you can fly a helicopter? Like, they seem different. I mean, I guess you could fly both. But usually you specialize in one, I believe. And at least they made it like, oh. You know what? We're not in the Air no, Force. What do we know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, um, but I love the big guy is telling him not to leave. And he's like, just tell them I hit you. Yeah. <laughs> the guy's <laughs> like, no one would ever hit that guy. That guy is gigantic. But he knocked out an alien. He did knock out Because he would an later alien. on be Muhammad Ali. In Ali. <laughs> See? True. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, the president nukes him. Yeah. Nuke the bastards. Which, again, I don't know why they assume this is going to work. We watch a lot of movies that have nuclear bombs in them. Yes. I said do. this before, you know. We, we do. Yeah. But, like, they, like you maybe want to run some tests on the ship that you got. Like, how do you know the nukes? And the environmental guy was, at this point, like, fuck it. Yeah. You know? Uh, so they, they launch the nuke. Mm -hmm. It's a really cool scene with the bombers. Yeah. Like, sending it mm -hmm. off with the people in, like, the car. And uh, it doesn't work. Yeah. Because... The fucking, of course. And it's all, like, blurry, and he's, like, waiting for confirmation. And he keeps, like, looking, and then they finally yeah. see that the ship's still there. They're like, Target is not destroyed. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, yeah, well, duh. Yeah. Like, you guys knew this was it's happening. It's a big fucking alien ship. Okay, oh, we're just gonna fire a more powerful bomb at it. Okay, well. Again, why aren't you doing more tests on the fucking ship that you have? Yeah. God damn it. Uh, because the writers were like, oh, we didn't think about that. We had three weeks to turn this in, <laughs> you know? And I like that the Will Smith going to find his wife, or girlfriend scene yeah. doesn't bother me too much because he knew exactly where she would be, you know? I guess so, but he's assuming a lot that she survived. Yeah. That. Uh, well, he goes and he... Precious gas that could be you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but he saves the first lady, but mm -hmm. not for long. No. She dies. She has internal bleeding. And then May Whit poor little Mae Whitman's like, is mommy sleeping? And he's like, yeah, she is. And I like to, it would be funny in the sequel where like, she's still waiting for her mom to like, wake Did up. Did mom wake up yet? <laughs> and her dad's like, no, she's still sleeping. She'd be like, where is she sleeping all the time? <laughs> Underground. <laughs> it's like, we never explained the concept of death to her. Yeah, we just figured she would look around, but everyone in this universe can't, has no <laughs> peripheral vision. Oh, <laughs> uh, Jeff Goldblum decides he because they launched the nuke he's like oh they hate the environment i'm gonna trash everything and he's starting with the hangar bay for the alien ship i'm like yeah i don't know if that counts as polluting the planet jeff I, but he he has been drinking a lot yeah but his dad's all like uh you got your health now get up before you catch a cold and then that gives him oh i'm gonna give the computer a virus just like the computer like just the computer virus just like the virus in war of the worlds Right, but this time it's a computer virus because now it's the, it's 90s. the 90s. And we gotta <laughs> update it, Newt. We're getting jiggy with it, Newt. <laughs> he should have uh, said, Welcome to Miami and punched that. <laughs> now, this seems stupid. Uh, Will's, uh, Jeff Goldblum wants to show off 
like uh, his thing. He's like, all right, can you shoot the soda can on the uh, the ship? Mm -hmm. And the shield goes up and deflects the bullet. Just what if in the a bullet? Room. By the way, there are people in front of Adam Baldwin. Yeah, not a smart idea. Like even if you're not aiming them, bullets, guns are very unpredictable sometimes. And then the bullet ricochets, and Jeff Goldman goes, "Oops." What if the bullet only hit the president and Will Smith's kids? And like we just see, like it's the fucking, it's the beginning of the movie Lord of War. Just <laughs> <laughs> and then the movie just gets dark from that point. But again, the shields, like, so the shields knew to deflect the bullet. Yeah. He's like, but, hey. But, but the people walking on the ship mm -hmm. and then drilling things into the ship and then putting the, but th that's what, not a threat. What did he tell him to shoot? The can. What kind of can? A Coke can. <sighs> Sorry, Newt. I'm very thirsty. Oh. God damn it. Okay. Maybe you can see. It's not the big logo. You are a walking brown eye, my friend. <laughs> <sighs> super refreshing. <laughs> it is very mm -hmm. I love cold chemicals. <laughs> but no, then he plugs it in. Yeah. It's like, I gave it a virus, and now we can shoot it. it it's fine. And we're going to put a virus in the mothership, which is going to send it to other ships, I yeah. guess. I guess it's the thing that happens. Well, it's like the movie Reign of Fire. When you kill the male, the other ones are just going to die of grief. The, the dragons are like, well, what's going to kill the other ones? Depression. It's like, have they not been laying eggs? Yeah. Like male chromosomes? I, I, don't, th I don't know. I think Rain, well, Rain of Fire is awesome, though. Rain of Fire is great. I fucking love Rain yeah. of Fire. <laughs> fucking Matthew McConaughey and, oh, uh, so and uh, Christian Bale. Yeah, so he's basically like, we're going to do this, and uh, we just got to fly into the mothership. And mm -hmm. like, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. So then Will Smith nominates himself. Uh, he's like, yeah, you know, I'll, uh, I'll fly the ship. I've seen how these things fly. I'm like, for five seconds? And... Yeah, you were... And it was behind you most of the time. When it hits a fly backwards. He's like, uh, fucking Vin Diesel in, <laughs> in Fast and the Furious. He just drives it backwards. <laughs> you know, this movie's about family. It is, yeah. <laughs> and they're all dead from the aliens. <sighs> but yeah, so this is like finally when Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum start having scenes together. Yeah. And again, like, if, if this is when you're just like, oh yeah, they don't know who each other are. No, Yeah. They could have went this whole movie and at the very end been like, who are you? Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm I'm the I'm the guy who fixes satellites. I'm the guy who flies the helicopter. Bye. That reminds me of, was it season three of Arrested Development? Mm -hmm. uh, remember Lucille 2? Yeah. Played by What's-Her-Face, Liza Minnelli. Liza Minnelli. I love that there's that scene where, like, uh, George Michael, like, someone references her, and he's like, who? Yeah. And you he, realize he's, he's never, never met her. <laughs> there was one scene where he mentioned her, but mm -hmm. he didn't know who she was. He, mm -hmm. And she's dating Buster. He's like, I thought that was his nurse. But yeah, he's like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> they're like, really? I feel like we talk about her a lot. Um, yeah. So around the world, they're all mm -hmm. using Morse code. Around the world. Oh. Yeah. You've done that. Yeah. Uh, they're using Morse code to talk to everyone. And they're like, we figured out a way. And the British are like, well, blimey, they've yeah. done it. Well, so and, this thing, they're going to take down them aliens all day. And I love love that uh, I assume it's Russia, mm -hmm. but I said that the characters in Titanic were Russian and people yeah. were like, they were Swedish, you asshole. I'm like, whatever. So some Eastern European country, mm -hmm. they get a message. They also get the Morse code, but then like the Independence Day theme, like becomes Russian for a second. It's like, oh, that was uh, awesome. Uh. Yeah. I'm like, but they didn't do it. Like, I don't think they did it for like whatever the Asian country mm -hmm. was afterwards. Well, like, the, they should have just did it for every country. The Brits are in Iraq. And uh, yeah. the the Iraqi soldier who comes in is the guy who owns the gas station in Kingpin. When he has what he says about uh, oh, that they right. put, he's like they put uh, they put uh, uh, sugar in your tank, and he sticks his fingers in Woody Harrelson's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> oh, hold on. I almost did an impression there, and I would that would have ended so poorly for me. <laughs> but Will Smith finally marries his girlfriend mm -hmm. and Jeff Goldblum and his ex-wife are the witnesses because he has his he still wears his ring that's true and that's she true. touches the and ring then, and then she holds his hand they decide they're in love now too yeah and Ron Howard's dad just shows up yes, yes. do you think he knows he's in this movie he was just in a room and they Will Smith shows up and they're like oh all right <laughs> and then we get the most American scene ever the speech my, the and I will tell my story real quick my friend Chris cried in the theater openly wept in the theater in this scene and i went <laughs> and i started laughing and the guy behind me flicked the back of my ear because i was ruining this emotional scene you we're ruining the scene i time. laughed uh, yeah so yeah it's the most amazing speech ever and i and i stood up in the theater and i went like that mm -hmm. <laughs> i love i love the shot of the one guy just going 
I love the guy who's in all the shots in the background who later on is at the end. He's the dude with the trucker cap and the oh, beard yeah. and the denim that guy's jacket. Great. I'm like, wait, why is the, the roadie from Jethro Toll helping the president? <laughs> uh, but today is our Independence Day. Today, we celebrate our Independence Day. And I think that most days that you and I are together are codependence days. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I love, you know, it has a new meaning now. And, mm -hmm. and then they, they try to get him to do another speech in the second one. And then it wasn't. Oh, it was so embarrassing. But I love in the beginning of the second one, the aliens are listening to the speech from the first movie. And they're like, him, oh, we're going to get them. <laughs> the aliens in this movie and the Mars Attacks aliens should team up. <laughs> and then we find out that Marvin the Martian is the true villain behind all of it. Oh, man, he has no loyalty because in Space Jam, as we pointed yeah. out, he was the neutral referee because mm -hmm. he's alien and tune. He's like, I have no right. Motherfucker. <laughs> he's an alien, but he's not an Earth. Yeah. <laughs> he's like uh, Spock. Yes, exactly. Uh, so then the president decides he's going to fly. Which is bullshit. I get it. They need they need fucking Randy Quaid. I do like the scene where Randy Quaid's like, keep him coming with the black coffee because he's yeah, drunk. Yeah, because he's trying to sober up. Yeah. Uh, but, okay, I get it. There's only so many people who can fly. Yeah. But this was the president of the United States is now the, he's the leader of the world now. Oh, yeah, because they find out the base that they sent uh, the vice president yeah. and the cabinet to they got destroyed. Yeah. So they're like, all right, well, I'm the only one left. Uh, and he fires the secretary of defense. Mm -hmm. So there's there's not a much of a chain of command. Left. <laughs> Where was the designated survivor? Where did he go? I don't know. And they want to have him survive because they don't want his daughter to be in charge now because she doesn't know that her mother's not sleeping. <laughs> like fucking Natalie Portman. My and first Tech order of business is to wake, to wake my, my mom, mom up. up. A, a prince needs to kiss her. <laughs> and they're like, oh, that kid's brain might not work properly. You can't um, have child leaders. Like, even in the ancient Egyptians, they're like, okay, nine-year-old, you're the king, but we're going to take care of all this yeah, stuff. Yeah, don't worry know. about it. You got a club foot and <laughs> fucked up genitals there, tootin' common, but we're good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so but uh, so Bill Pullman mm -hmm. is, I was going to say Bill Paxton, yeah. uh, is now the leader of the world because it's his plan yes. to make everybody fight together as one. It's yeah. the Independence Day for the world, and they're going to be independent of aliens. Doesn't really make sense. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. It makes perfect sense. Okay. They but will that, not go quietly into the night. No. They will not go down without a fight. They're going to survive. <laughs> they're going to move on. Live on. Live on. Sh shut up. <laughs> I guess I love America a little bit more because I remember inspirational speeches. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so like at one point, like whoever's in charge of England and Iraq and France yeah. and Russia be like, uh, hey, no, we kind of need you down here. Send the fucking crop duster, <laughs> you know, but the president's like, <laughs> and I'm just like, no, because if I was another country, I'd be like, yeah, you know what? We didn't like those guys before and nobody's going to know it's a dogfight. I just take out the president. Yes. You know, please uh, don't clip that. But, <laughs> but instead he goes. Yeah. He goes and fights because he's a pilot, mm -hmm. uh, much like some presidents that we had. Uh, and then Randy Quaid, again, is volunteering himself mm -hmm. and trying to sober up. And then uh, they, they, they launch their attack uh, in space. What's it called? Will Smith and Jeff Goldblum go to space on their ship. They have a bumpy start because yeah. they have the things backwards. Oh, yeah. That was kind of funny, though. Yeah, he's like, and he's just he's like, what, what, oops, what oops? <laughs> So they go to space. They mm -hmm. go to the mothership. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, they plant the virus. That makes people like, all right, we can finally attack the ship, mm -hmm. but they're not doing enough damage. Yeah. And uh, the president gets the idea. We got to shoot their weapon because maybe it'll start a chain reaction. How do they figure that out? I don't know. Well, because they didn't return to the Jedi. Okay. Yeah, they did. Because even their power chargey thing it looks like, like the return like of the Jedi. But it also looks like uh, uh, like a waffle or pretzel cone on the boardwalk. Like, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so he's trying to shoot that. He's out of missiles. But who's coming to save the day? Randy Quaid. Sorry I'm late, Mr. President. <laughs> Red leader, you know. Yeah. Ugh, Jesus Christ. And he shows up in a regular jet. In a regular jet. In the, in the movie, movie that we saw. In the movie we saw. But we, right before this, I was like, oh, wait. The special edition DVD has the deleted ending uh, where he flies his crop duster, which, which is the tied a dumbest too. fucking thing. And then we listen to the commentary and he's like, well, this is like a nice comedic moment, but it yeah. really ruins the drama and the realism. It's of like, it. you think I'm like, at this point, we're fucking worried about the realism of the movie, but it's so silly. And he's just wearing like, like fucking when Snoopy was a pilot kind of look, but yeah. he can communicate with all the other ships. Like once he's. And a nuclear missile isn't going to be too heavy for his fucking crop duster? He didn't have a nuke. That wasn't a nuke. That was just a regular missile. It's still too heavy. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. 
But uh, also, I don't think he could breathe at that high of an altitude. No. That's why they're all wearing that. I don't know. Again, I'm not. Harry lying. Connick Jr. was in a real fucking thing and he died. <laughs> and now he can't croon on hollow on holiday albums. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And him dying, not just fucked up Ryan Reynolds, but it led to the rise of Taj. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Remember uh, the Van Wilder sequel that Van Wilder's not in? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, then they also talked about how like him strapping the missile ahead of time means he's okay with his death. Yeah. And they wanted to have that moment where he decides. Mm -hmm. it, smart change. Smart no, yeah. Change. I get like on paper, that's the ending you want. But then so when you think about it, you're like, that's not going to work. No. Uh, this would be a good death, like he, in the Dark Knight. He Night sacrifices return. himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, he he blows up the thing, but even to the very end, he's like, "Hey, guys, uh, up yours! I'm back!" And like my generation said, "Up yours!" Yeah. So it's like I think he really was abducted yeah. by those aliens. I think they sent scouts Do out. Do you think the one is like excited, like here he comes? Oh my god, I'm so nervous! <laughs> and then he blows the fucking thing up. Like the one is like all fucking hard and ready, hey, and can like we get a fan art of just an alien hugging Randy. <laughs> <Quaid>. <laughs> Or an alien in its room looking at a <laughs> looking at a picture of Randy Quaid, its leg up on the thing. <laughs> like, it's got to be in the exos. Uh -huh. The tentacles make a heart. <laughs> Mid salad, are you watching? Do that. You're gonna draw that stupid. Shit. <laughs> You're gonna draw that stupid shit. Do it. And if you don't want to do it, I'll pay you like I usually do. Yeah. I don't think we ever released the Ash Ketchum picture. Oh, that was yeah. That came. Mid salad drew a picture of Ash Ketchum. It's standing in a bathtub holding peak because that was my idea when we, Justin and I, when the episode came out and didn't do very well Yeah, I was like do you think Ash gets to a point where he's like 40 something and his wife left him and he's not allowed to see his kids <laughs> And he just gets in the tub with Pikachu and just starts crying and drops him <laughs> <laughs> So back on the mothership back on the mothership uh, the, the the virus work, but they're trapped. It's like holding them and yeah. the aliens like the aliens should be like, oh, that's weird uh, that ship that went missing in the 50s is back, and now it's got human stuff yeah. bolted to it, and it's not opening its flash shields. Also, it has a missile attached to it and a silver dildo. That's in the extended Yeah, part. yeah, yeah. They're like, we have this radio thing, but it looks like a silver dildo just hanging off the is ship. Is it the, and the thing in Man of Steel they put them in? Yeah. yeah the fucking dildos. And at no point, the, the, it takes them a while to finally be like, what's going on with that ship? Like, yeah. that's weird. It was because everybody was in the alien office over there. Oh, right. You know? I do like that the aliens are like us. They, they sit in a little desk. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> they like type on their <laughs> uh, but they're ready for their invasion they have yeah. different ships in there they're all lining mm -hmm. up so I guess like the aerial attack is done they're gonna yeah. go in and the kill ground the survivors. one yeah, yeah. Uh, and then they're like alright you know what fuck it they like their cigars mm -hmm. and they're like they're not very positive body positive in this movie because they keep talking about the fat lady singing it's an opera joke mm -hmm. you asshole I don't and know over to the fat lady sings oh. I forget where that originated from I know it's an opera joke uh, but yeah so they launch the nuke mm-hmm Somehow they get out of their, I guess, blowing up that guy's office, let them out of their. I just love the shot where the missile goes through the office and there's just the guy who's filing paperwork and the alien paper. <laughs> he's like, and he, oh. yeah, he's like, oh, Zork didn't put it his pay, paid time off. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love like, I love how they're being mean to it. They're mm -hmm. like, bye. Yeah. <laughs> and then like they put the little skull on its screen. Which is right out of uh, Stargate. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. In the, a couple seconds from mm -hmm. now. It's oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, because they just literally just copied and pasted the ending of their other did. movie. I mentioned that in our start oh, okay. episode I did with Ryan. But yeah, uh, I love when they're running away from the ships. Mm -hmm. It's another fun dog yeah. battle. But they have to put on, they have to use the quote from Jurassic Park. Must go faster. Which go you faster. accidentally typed as, mutt go faster. Well, no, in <laughs> Indiana Jones' son is oh, what right. I was talking about, yeah. <laughs> mutt go faster. Yeah. <laughs> when they're on the motorcycle getting away exactly. from the, you know. But yeah, no, that's what I think they just ripped it right from Jurassic mm -hmm. Park. I don't even think they're they're like just grab that line. Oh, and we also skipped over back. when his laptop says "Good morning, Dave," oh, and it's the yeah. 2001 thing. It's and like I was, how? <laughs> yeah, Stanley Kubrick was still alive at that point. He would knock on Dean Devlin's door and just punch him in the balls. <laughs> uh, but then, oh no, he's dead. He died in '99. Yeah, but this is '96, '97. Okay, oh, I, wow. Yeah. Anyway, so they blow up the ship, and you're yeah. right. It, it cuts to an alien. Just, it, well, it's an alien that, like, another alien got hit by the missile. Yeah, and then another alien's like, "What's going on in there?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it blows up in his face, just like Star. It should have been like Mondays. Am I right? <laughs> it's holding a coffee cup. World's Bex Zarlarp. <laughs> Uh, mothership is completely eradicated, which is cool. I like when the fire's coming out of all the yeah. chambers. I like that it has two fangs. For mm -hmm. um, completely destroyed. Uh, the other ships. Now that their shields are down and they're all disoriented, mm -hmm. disoriented, they're going down. 
She don't say anything weird about this scene with all the ships going down. No, Tony, tell me. It's daytime. Yeah. On every corner of the planet, it's well, daytime, is which it I because think of, also happened in Armageddon. But is it also because a massive, it's reflecting off of the atmosphere? <laughs> no, fuck you. No, that is not it. That is no, not No, but it. like, yeah, like if there's a massive explosion like that in space and all these things are blowing up, wouldn't it reflect off our atmosphere? It would not be that bright. It would not be as bright as the sun, you asshole. I don't know. I've never survived an alien invasion. So it's daytime everywhere, and mm -hmm. I, like I said, I think Armageddon made the same mistake when yeah. the asteroid blows up, and they're just like, oh, we're in France, it's daytime, yeah. America, it's daytime, over here, it's daytime. Well, it couldn't all be happening at the same time, maybe it's happening at different times, they're just showing daytime in that country. I don't know. Mm. You know what, I'll give it a pass for this one, maybe that was a montage, but Armageddon, they show like the asteroid as it's blowing up, and it's like, okay. Well, isn't it at the end of uh, uh, Return of the Jedi, the special edition, it's nighttime everywhere when it happens? Right. Remember? Well, no, it's not on Coruscant. It's like Coruscant. It's it's like. Oh no no no! Well, the special special edition. It's night. They added Jar Jar Binks on the booth. Yeah, and he's like <laughs> celebrating. We so won. We so free. How does he know that though? Like, what if like they they blew up, you know, and the the yeah Darth Vader and the Emperor are like fuck those dudes, and the Emperor's like, man, good thing I didn't die. And I don't have Again, to come back. Again, they'd be like. Oh wait, isn't there a chain of command? Yeah, I assume someone else is gonna rise in mm -hmm. the ranks, and th there's like a mo and like, no, they won. Oh, okay, yeah. I guess so. <laughs> yep. So you had an idea for a sequel? Yeah, I think the movie should automat the sequel should automatically pick up with we we won, we beat the aliens, and then a Benghazi style trial begins where the Democrats, <laughs> the Republicans, are now fighting over the uh, how long it took to respond to the alien attack, and then that's funny misappropriation of funds. I used the word right that time about <laughs> yeah. our you know. It can yeah. all be that. The sequel had some good ideas. I like how they adapted to the aliens' technology. Mm -hmm. I like how some of the aliens were still alive, and there was like, what they mentioned happened in the be in the between. I'm mm -hmm. like, that sounds way cooler. Yeah. Like, they were Why did you make aliens. this movie? Like, because they were city sized. They had enough. Yeah. Like, like the, their their ships were down, but mm -hmm. they, there was enough places for them to hide yeah. in there. And like, yeah. So I laughed hysterically at good portions of that movie. And the only reason that it's not the worst movie is because it came out the week after uh, Terminator Genesis. Oh God. Yeah. Uh, talk about a movie I never want to watch. Mm -hmm. I still haven't watched the new one. There's a guy on Twitter that begs me to watch. The I movie. know. I'm like, yeah. I'll get to it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I still think it, it's dumb fun. It's a popcorn movie. It's a popcorn movie. Yeah, I, it's definitely I've seen dumb worse. fun. Like, don't think like the plot is stupid. Like, if people hate this movie, I'll be like, okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. It's not a movie I'm gonna defend. Mm -mm. Like, I would defend my country. Yeah, it's not a movie I'm gonna defend that. You should much. enlist. I'm too old for it now. No, eh, I'm too old. Come on, I'm too old. <laughs> uh, it's not a movie I'm gonna defend to my death, but mm -hmm. uh, it's one of like I can't hate it. Like there's other movies he did that I'm like, all right, day, day after tomorrow, that movie fucking. Oh sucks. my god, that was that's what Team America they wanted it to be was a marionette shot for shot remake yeah. of that. Uh, and despite, 20, 2012, yeah, 2012 is uh, awful, which I think we have. Uh, despite my shrine to Godzilla, I'm very well aware of that movie's fall, mm -hmm. <laughs> like flaws. Uh, but I don't know, Independence Day. I guess it got me at that right time. It's the perfect level of nostalgia. It was, it was in that period where we all wanted bigger, better special mm -hmm. effects. And uh, yeah, I think it's a I think it's a good time. Now you know what, Newt? What's that? I know I didn't promise you fireworks at the beginning of this episode because I forgot to set that up. But, <laughs> but I promised you fireworks. Mm -hmm. You ready for some fireworks? Let's get some fireworks. Let's get some fireworks. All right, I promise you fireworks, dude. Oh shit! <laughs> From sea to shining sea. <laughs> Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talking about tapes.